Tinibu's disqualification. 24 final questions the tribunal judges will say yes or no to in order to remove Tinibu. Hello, people. Welcome back once again to my YouTube channel. You know, the election petition tribunal has actually, you know, uh, almost come to an end because what is now remaining in the election petition tribunal is for the tribunal judges, as a matter of fact, to pick a particular date that will give that they will give their final answer and their, their final verdict or judgment concerning all the evidences and the response and all the uh, uh, documents that have been presented by Labour Party and how uh, the APC and Tinibu's lawyers have actually countered those documents and all that, you know. So they have to choose a particular date to answer yes or no to some certain questions. And that will come up, uh, they are, that will actually present and bring forth their final answers. You know, I'm, a lot of people are wondering, what are these 24 questions? What are these 24 final questions that the election petition tribunal, you know, there are actually five, which uh, Justice uh, Samani is actually leading the uh, election petition tribunal. Now, uh, what are the 24 questions? Because this, these are pertinent for people to understand what these tribunal judges have to judge and what they are, the way they are going to look at the case and probably say yes or no to this. And that is why I made this particular video to enlighten you people and to tell you people what to expect and how the election petition tribunal judges might actually come up with their final conclusion at the end of the day in order to disqualify Tinibu as a matter of fact and return the victory to uh, Mr. Peter Obi. Well, before I dive into this particular case, if this is your first time of visiting this particular channel, as a matter of fact, don't hesitate to click on the notification button so I get notified whenever I drop a new and important video here and equally subscribe to this particular YouTube channel. Now, without wasting your time, without any further ado, let's head straight to the 24 important questions that this tribunal judges need to answer yes or no to in order to invalidate and remove Bola Ahmed Nebu as the presence of this particular country. Well, the number one question the tribunal judges need to answer for us, the number one, and, 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 uh, the, the number one important question they need to answer is whether forfeiture is the same as a fine. You know, ever since this uh, Tony Bush fund that sixty thousand US dollars that's been forfeited to the United States government, you know, a lot of people have been wondering whether forfeiture is equivalent to fine because according to the uh, Constitution of the, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, nine in one nine seven uh, section one nine seven and one uh, D, it indicates that if anybody has been fined as a matter of fact in whatsoever name, I've done this particular, I've said this, I've told you guys consistently in my previous videos, if anybody has been fined when you, uh, 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 or in, in fund wanting in any crime whatsoever and fine according to that particular section of the constitution the, the person is not as a matter of fact worthy to be the president or even uh, worthy to vie for the presidential position well the second question that this particular uh, tribunal judges need to answer yes or no to is if for future is a fine then whether Tinibu was liable for that fine for dishonesty you know if they are finally agree that for future is a fine now they have to determine if whether Tinibu was liable for that fine for dishonesty. Now, the third question uh, this particular election patient tribunal judges need to answer yes or no is whether the order by a court in US is in USA is conclusive. Now you know that Nibu's lawyers have been arguing that since the case happened outside the shores of this particular country, that it doesn't matter that the constitution of Nigeria you know stipulates that the that the that the judgment must come from a court in Nigeria. Meanwhile, the constitution of Nigeria said that in, by any competent court of jurisdiction, but you can see what Nibu's lawyers are trying to do. They are trying to, you know, uh, turn the constitution upside down, saying that it must be uh, a, a court in Nigeria. Meaning, if anybody goes outside and kills or commits murder, any form of uh, crime there, and being sentenced there, that it doesn't that the person can still return back to Nigeria and become the president. You know, this is what Nibu's lawyers are indirectly saying. Now, the fourth question we should ask is whether they said fine contravenes section 137 1D of the constitution, which I have told you guys about whether this particular uh, fine contradicts or contravenes, as a matter of, sorry, contravenes Section 137D of uh, the Constitution of Nigeria, which speaks about uh, someone that, has, uh, that is under a fine cannot, as a matter of fact, uh, buy for the presidential position. Now, the fifth question the, the tribunal judges will, judges will answer yes or no to is whether they said fine would be considered under Section 137.1F of the Constitution. Now, Section 137.1F of the Constitution is that part that Tinibu's lawyers are saying that uh, that if a, if a particular judgment you know uh, exceeds more than 10 years, that it becomes uh, invalid, that the person can actually come back and, and actually uh, co you know, contest or vie for any presidential position, any political position in the country. This is what Tinibu's lawyers are saying, misinterpreting and misquoting that part of this, uh, that section of the Constitution, you know, trying to you know uh, misinterpret it and everything. Saying that uh, the person, as a matter of fact, if the case or if the crime 
uh, or the sentence is more than 10 years that the person can come back and buy for the prisoner position, which is a lie, which is not what the constitution says. Now, the sixth one is whether Shetima knowingly allowed himself to be nominated as a candidate for the office of vice president and senate at the same time, which we've discussed in our previous video. Now, the seventh question this tribunal judges will need to answer is whether upon the resignation of Masari being Titinibu's uh, uh, temporary uh, 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 running mate as VP for Tinibu. Tinibu and APC fail to nominate, nominate and forward to INEC a replacement within the 14 days period, which is what P2B is contending. You know, double nomination of Shetima and all that. Now, the eighth question that the tribunal needs to uh, 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 attend to is the one that has to concern with the P2B. Whether P2B is a member of Labour Party and was validly sponsored by Labour Party as presidential candidate. You know, we've stated it before that it is the sole right of a political party to state who is their member and who is not their member. No other part, political party have to has the right to state that this person is not a member of a political party, provided that, provided that the political party recognizes the person according to the constitution of their uh, of their party. We've dealt with that one before in our previous video. Now, the ninth one that I need to determine is whether the Electoral Act and INEC regulations made it mandatory made it mandatory over the transmission of results on from ECA onto the IREV and collation system at the polling unit, which is what we've been discussing for several, for several times here. Now, the tenth question is whether collation at the world level, now this is the tenth question they should answer, whether, whether collation at the world level can proceed without ascertaining the accreditation number on the hard copy of from ECA 8A with the accreditation number displayed on the, uh, displayed on the physical BBAS machine. You know, INEC did manual accreditation. Meanwhile, they did not even use the VBAS machine to, to check if the total number of votes were more than the total number of people accredited, which could actually signify overvoting, which P2B submitted a lot of polling units where there, is, uh, where there was overvoting and all that, you know. And the eleventh uh, question INEC, uh, the tribunal judges need to answer is whether collation at the world level can proceed with that, whether collation at the world level can proceed without ascertaining the votes called by political parties on the hard copy form ECA with that in the uploaded copy of ECA on the IRF. Now, this is what I've dealt before. The justices need to say yes or no, whether it is possible for someone to collate election results without comparing the form, the physical form ECA he or she has with the one uploaded on the IRF portal. Now, the 12th question here is whether the INEC, whether the INEC hard copy results on form ECA must be a mirror copy of the form ECA is come by the beavers and uploaded onto the IRF. Now, the 13th question is whether results not ascertained by the uploaded copy is invalid. Now, the 14th question to determine is whether the CTC, the certified through copy results uploaded onto the IRF but on reader will be considered invalid because I told the people to be brought 18,000 plus filling unit results from IRF portal that we are, are blood. So, the election petition tribunal judges need to say yes or no that whether the uh, CTC being certified through copy results or uploaded onto the IRF, but only they will be considered invalid, whether they will consider the results invalid and other for a run. The 15th is whether the CTC original results sheet that only they will be considered invalid. You know, there were uh, uh, certified through copy of original results sheet that are still uh, on readable, will they be considered valid or invalid? Now, the 16th question is whether INEC is at the liberty to upload unverified or unreliable results on, in, onto the IRF to be viewed by the Nigerian public. Whether I, I make, as a matter of fact, have the right to be uploading or readable blood and even pictures of some certain things that are not even related to the election, the election on the onto the IRF portal. Now, whether the seventeenth one is whether I, I invalid results be cancelled according to section fifty one two of the electoral act. Then the eighteenth one is whether there are pooling units we are over voting or called, which I've explained before. Now, whether the combined failure to upload results from the polling units on readable from ECA results and instances of overvoting over be adjudged as substantial non compliance with the Electoral Act, which is true. Now, the 20th question is whether the combined, if, if, whether the combined affected effect of instances of overvoting and unreadable results would pro have probably brought about a different outcome of the results. Then, the last one is whether INEC knowingly neglected to upload the results at the polling unit. Then, the last one is here is okay. The 22 one here is whether INEC knowingly neglected to ascertain the political party's results with the IRF results of upload onto the IRF during the collection. Now, 20, the 23 question is whether FCT Abuja is considered one of the states of the federation for the purpose of, pre of presidential election. Now, the 24th question here is whether the provisions of the constitution mandates that the person with the plurality or majority of votes also secure 25 percent in FCT Abuja in addition to the to securing 25 percent in at least 20, 24 of the 36 states of the federation. So you could see that here, INEC, uh, the election position tribunal have about 24 questions to answer yes or no to and to ascertain, not to disqualify or actually you know, uh, bastardize our constitution. Well, 
we'll see how these things unfold and how the uh, five tribunal judges will actually uh, come up with an answer to this particular question. So I